DJ Valentino here with Bonnie from Stand Atlantic. How are you doing today, Bonnie? I'm doing okay. It's early, but um, I'm, I'm working through it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Now, uh, you've just released your new album, Pink Elephant, and you've released it in a really weird time. Tell me a little bit about album promo in massive quarantine. Um, it's the scariest thing ever. Um, so, like, at the start of the year, we had everything all sorted out. I feel like everyone was in the same boat where, like, 2020 started and everyone was like, this is going to be the best year ever. And that's what we were like, too. And then COVID hit and we were like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I think um, the fact that we, like, have gotten such a, like, great response and, like, it's gone so well um, is honestly bewildering because we just thought it was going to be like just a throwaway kind of thing because of the whole state of the earth. Um, but yeah, it's a super, super weird time to release music. Cause it's like that first week or two when it like came out, we were like, go, 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 go. And normally that happens. And then you have a tour to follow it up. But this time we're just sitting on our butts, <laughs> like don't know what to do. I'm like super bored. <laughs> like yeah. I'm just watching Netflix, like our album's out pretty dope <laughs> but yeah you win and especially like the second record of the band is so infamous and every you know like the, everyone's is so terrified of the sophomore slump you know that, that's the yeah. biggest fear in any of the music realm and for you guys to release an album in such a historic unprecedented time and all the comments i've seen have been positive all the reviews i've seen have been positive and it, it really is a phenomenal record do you feel like it's just a weight lifted off your shoulders now that it's out that it, it it did well. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Like it's so scary going in. Like we had to change everything, obviously, as I'm sure everyone else did. Um, and you don't know if it's gonna work. Like you don't know if people are even gonna care. Like you have no idea. And it's not like anyone's done this before because I mean, as everyone keeps saying, these are unprecedented times. <laughs> no one knows what the is happening. So um. Yeah, I think uh, it was very scary being almost like a guinea pig um, to like try and see how this is going to go. Um, but yeah, I, as I said before, we, we couldn't have asked for a better response considering. And to be honest, now that I think about it, like we spend a lot of time now like being nostalgic and like thinking about, oh man, like this tour, that tour, like remember when this happened? Oh my God. And uh, <laughs> we, uh, I was thinking like, uh, how much better like would this have gone if we got on if we were on to releasing it but for some reason I feel like maybe it wouldn't have even done as well because um, I think the fact that we spent so much time like actually trying to release it in a really beneficial way and like doing everything we could to like make it do as well as it did then maybe it wouldn't have done as well I don't know that was me just thinking out loud sorry <laughs> I just went on a huge tangent um, no yeah. but you're right and even in a way like during quarantine and still happening now is that radio numbers and Spotify numbers are at unprecedented levels. Like they're spiking to levels we haven't seen before. And it's because yeah. people are stuck at home and they, they don't, you know, what else are they going to do? They're going to listen to new yeah. music. Exactly. I mean, I've listened to so much more music now than I have before. I feel like when we're on tour and stuff, like the last thing I want to do is listen to music because I listen to <laughs> our band every day. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, like, I, it's just so nice to be able to have the time and chill out and, like, the Taylor Swift album came out or whatever and you get to listen to the whole thing uninterrupted. And, yeah, it's definitely different. I think it's cool. Definitely, definitely. One thing I've been dying to ask you about mm -hmm. is um, the track listing of the album, it, it flows so well. From start to finish, it really does feel cohesive. And there are certain, even songs like Hate Me Sometimes, when that was released in November, I, you know, it was a great record and, I, and I, a great song and I liked it, but hearing it in the context of the album, I kind of appreciated it more because it, it does lead the album off on such a cool note. How did you decide what song goes in what order? Thank you very much, by the way. Um, uh, we argue a lot. <laughs> and it always seems like once it's done, we're just like, why the f do we spend so long arguing about that? But then one person like yourself says, I'm so glad you put the, uh, the songs in that way. And you're like, it was worth it. It was worth the argument. Um, yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I think I'm, I'm the one that kind of like sits back in that conversation because to me, the album track listing isn't as important to these days anyway like obviously I do get it if it's done in 
specific way. Like, I think that's so sick, but because our album isn't like a full on like concept album or anything, doesn't tell like one big story. I just kind of think, um, you know, just make sure the sad songs are track seven, do what you want. Um, (laughs) and, uh, yeah. So I kind of sit back in in those conversations. Obviously I put my two cents in, but, um, I think having it flow well was something we were considering just always just because you know there are still people out there that still listen to it all the way through um start to finish they don't like put it on shuffle or anything like that so um yeah uh we definitely just wanted it to flow well and um i don't know maybe we were thinking of like a live situation as well um I don't know. I wish I had a better answer for you because no, we kind no, of no. just like we're arguing for so long that now I don't even know like what the f- our reasoning was for it. <laughs> we're like, does it sound good? All right, sick. Put it in. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense what you're saying. If you have a concept album, it's very obvious what song goes where. But when it's yeah. not a concept record, I'm sure like just piecing together like where, you know, the exact track listing has got to be hell. I, th- I think like, <laughs> I think the biggest like, task was like picking which one goes first so we were just like well people always put the single first so we should put the single first we're like no that we're gonna put someone else on like i don't know it's just a mess but i'm just glad people listen to all the songs (laughs) i'm like you deal with it boys i'm sitting back (laughs) i wrote them you can deal with them now (laughs) i love it i love it so now you mentioned the sad song drink to drown i definitely want to touch up on that because i think that it is absolutely gorgeous Anything you can tell me about either the lyrical inspiration behind that song? I know on your first record, kind of the sad song was like Toothpick, you know what I mean? And it just, the way that you guys evolved on this record, it just, it sounds incredible. So anything you have to say for that song in particular? Thank you. Um, Yeah, it's sad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's kind of just about like, um, feeling like you're, you're giving your all to someone and they're not, kind of reciprocating I I find it hard like when we're writing sad songs I find it really hard not to write about like relationships or heartbreak all the corny shit but whatever anyway um yeah so it's kind of just about like yeah feeling like you're giving it all not getting it reciprocated but also that kind of like being okay in a way because like a lot of people just deal with love in different ways and like show it in so many different ways that like just because like you made them an egg sandwich and they like didn't appreciate it and to you that egg sandwich was saying i f-ing love you but to them it was like sick egg sandwich thanks and then maybe like they've done something for you that you didn't notice like they fixed your xbox and you <laughs> were just like eh thank you it's done and they to them that was them saying i f-ing love you and you just kind of like didn't really notice um so yeah it's, it's kind of it's kind of all that and uh i think uh the whole thing can be summed up in the one line that says, um, if you love me, saturate me. So it's like, I'm here. Just love me. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. You're right. And again, like the way you sing that in particular, like it, it's got such emotion behind it. You know, when you really, really belt it out, it, it, I, it adds to the song and it adds to how awesome the song is. What did you have to do to kind of get in the mind space and mentally, like emotionally when recording these songs in the studio? Um, I think for Toothpick, it was really hard. It was the first time we'd ever done a song like that before. And that song was like super, super personal to me at the time. Um, so that was really difficult to kind of do without like welling up or whatever. Hmm. Um, but now that I'm made of stone, uh, we were in the studio and, um, we started doing some takes and like, it is, when I hear it, when I heard it back for the first time, I was like, yeah, that's ow, <laughs> like I'm hurting, but doing it, like, I just have to like kind of push my emotions to the side in a way, like still obviously perform as well as I could and make it can like be as genuine as possible. But, um, I just try not to get too deep into it or I will probably just crumble into a ball and die. But also I will say that for a lot of the takes, Brandon was sitting on the couch with his laptop being a little Hole and like typing away and we kept having to tell him to shut up <laughs> and it was definitely putting me off in a lot of takes <laughs> you're just trying to get into the right headspace and all you hear is the click 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 <laughs> i love it i love it so now 
one another awesome thing about this new record is you guys have definitely played a little bit with like aesthetics and you know like kind of creating like a whole vibe around an album but i think this is the time that you guys went 100 percent in you know with everything either being when hate me came out everything was green all the merch was green and now you know everything is pink all the photo shoots are really pink when you're writing the albums do you kind of get a sense of the color scheme or color palette that it's going to bring yeah I'm, I'm weird i kind of so far i'm two for no i'm three for three including the ep of um having the title before all the songs are written or like i'll maybe it's literally in like a voice memo stage and i'm kind of like i want the so i want the album to be called this like something will stick with me um obviously if something else comes along better during the process then i'm gonna pick that but I kind of like have my heart set on a title before everything's fully written. Um, which I kind of like in a way because it like gives us some kind of direction and something to like aim for. Um, Cause it's very easy to like, just kind of go off and like all your ideas like <laughs> out here. Whereas like, if you have some kind of direction, at least they're like compact, but still. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, we kind of had it quite early on and, uh, I was dealing with the artwork for like friggin' six months or something, trying to get it right. We got back so many different like versions that looked like different genitals. I'm not even lying. Oh my um, gosh. And it was so confusing. I'm like, we've said elephant and a brain. How have you got this budgie smuggler now? I don't <laughs> understand how that happens. Uh, <laughs> and then one looked like ovaries and like a, like a vagina. Oh, it was oh, super, yeah. super weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, aside from that, um, yeah, I think like choosing the colors and all that kind of thing is very, very important to us. I think we learned that with, with hate me. Cause, um, once it, once we released that single, we were just really happy with everything for once. <laughs> and, uh, we, I think like aesthetically, even though like, obviously like your craft and the actual art that you're making and everything you're putting into the live show and all of that is super important but um i don't like to overlook the the aesthetic value or the like artistic um like side of things and how it, how everything comes across visually we just want all our like ducks in a row so to speak mm. and, and you're right that if if you have like an end point that you're striving towards, maybe that's why the album sounds so cohesive and it sounds so like put together because if you just kind of wrote a ton of, you let your ideas wander, then it might sound like, you know, manic or incomplete, but yeah, sure. yeah definitely. I think, um, yeah. Also cause the album's so varied as well. We just wanted to make sure that it still had some kind of like foundation that like people could still latch onto. And it wasn't just like all a bunch of different ideas and it looks like we don't know what we're doing because <laughs> The reality is we had every intention of doing everything we did. So, so yeah, but thank you. Be kind words. <laughs> yeah. And again, I think like the way that you guys play with like pop punk and like you go like more pop on some songs, more punk on some songs. I think you ride the line of pop punk very, very well in, in, in this record. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. That was kind of the goal. Like just wanted to just show people that we can't be well we don't want to be put into a box and like we're mm. kind of capable of doing anything we because we our whole like ethos or philosophy on songs is like if the hook's good song's good doesn't matter what kind of salad dressing you're putting on it it's still a sick salad <laughs> yep yep <laughs> Well, again, thank you so much for talking with me today. Pink Elephant is available on all streaming platforms. Tune in to Tuesday Under the Stars, 10 to midnight, and you can hear more Stand Atlantic. Bonnie, thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you, man. All good. Have a good day.